Welcome back to another video. Uh, this time just a quick video on how I edit my raw files using DxO Photo Lab. Had a few people asking questions about that. Since discovering DxO Photo Lab, I've switched from using multiple software applications for different tasks to just really using two, DxO Photo Lab and Affinity Photo. And uh, if you can hear birds screaming in the background, that's because there are birds screaming in the background. In some cases, DxO Photo Lab seems to provide better raw adjustment capabilities than Image Edge. And at the end of the video, I'll show my attempt to recover detail on this image with Image Edge Editor, where it seems to be unable to recover much detail from the highlights and shadows. With my previous workflow, I would use the camera manufacturer's raw browsers and editors, as I found those seem to give the best quality results, but they're all pretty bad to use. The browsers were typically pretty good, but the editors are quite slow and cumbersome to use and don't appear to be optimized for high performance graphics. So anytime you do adjustments, you have to wait until the image is re-rendered rather than providing a real-time view of adjustments. Since adopting DxO Photo Lab, my workflow is significantly simpler and a lot faster than before. I can browse the raw files, tag images I want to keep, delete unwanted ones, and make virtual copies. Make the raw adjustments, including local adjustments such as highlighting the eyes, and crop the images to produce the final output that I want. DxO Photo Lab also allows for automatic watermarking. And occasionally, if I need to remove unwanted artifacts such as stray branches, dust marks, or replacing the background, I'll use Affinity Photo for these more complex editing tasks. There are a few other things I like about DxO Photo Lab, including um, the fact that it's, it doesn't change the raw files. Uh, it, creates, it does create sidecar files in the same directory as the raw files, which contain the adjustments, but uh, it's basically non-destructive edits. Browser performance depends on your hard drive speed, so an SSD may be desirable for large numbers of files. Um, things can also get a little slow when there are a lot of edits as DxO Photo Lab will create rendered thumbnails for the edit, Im, edited images. So here's a quick example of my editing process. Um, open DxO Photo Lab, select the folder containing your raw files, select the raw file you want to edit and publish and select the customize tab on the top left of the application window to switch to the edit mode. So in this example we can see the image is rather bright and overexposed. Um, DxO Photo Lab will automatically adjust the lighting using smart lighting. I just turned that off so you can see the original image. So let's turn it back on and you can see it attempts to balance the lighting giving a slightly better result. In this case the whites on the bird are still blown out so we try and recover some detail by further reducing highlights. And as you can see even the maximum reduction in the highlights we still don't see any detail which means that the whites have been blown out uh, or overexposed. Still we get a little bit more detail around the edges which does help. So now let's look and let's see if we can recover some additional detail from the dark shadows. And if we increase the exposure in the shadows, we can see we get quite a lot of detail back. But one of the side effects of lightening the shadows is that we get a slightly sort of blue haze, which affects uh, quite a lot of the image. And we don't really want that, as it makes things look a bit faded. So we can recover some of that using the DxO Clearview Plus option. And you can use the slider to adjust the amount. So now let's have a look at increasing detail in specific areas without affecting other parts of the image by making some local adjustments. Typically I use this to increase the brightness and detail in the subject's eyes to provide a bit more interest in the image. It's not often that you get good light directly in the subject's eyes. So let's zoom into the eyes and increase the exposure on them. Select the local adjustments button, set the size and upper settings as shown, and paint over the eyeball area. 
Now increase the exposure one stop and check your result. Adjust to suit your image and just be sure to zoom out to view at the normal size when checking the result. So in this image, because the head is in shadows, I'll create another local adjustment to mask to brighten up the head area, particularly the beak. It would be nice to have a nice punchy sort of yellow beak. Uh, when painting the mask for an adjustment like this, try and use the edges of the brighter parts of the image to help with blending the adjustment into the rest of the image. In this case, I'll paint another area with some transparency to help blending the adjustment in. I'm not going to do a perfect job here. So there are a few additional adjustments I make to help increase the detail in the final image. Enable the contrast setting and push up the micro contrast option slightly. And depending on the image, you may want to increase the saturation of the colors as well. For denoise, I use the deep prime option and I will reduce luminescence and increase the lens sharpness just to help with overall sharpness of the image. And in order to view the resulting effects, you can select the specific area and see what effect the denoise engine will have. It, will, it won't, uh, denoise doesn't update the main image. Now, sometimes you'll get purple fringing around high contrast areas like the wings. And um, to, to remove that, use the other chromatic aberration option. And for this image, I set intensity and size to maximum and click the purple fringing checkbox. And as you can see, the purple fringe gets removed. And then when you're happy with the adjustments, export the image to disk and check the results. So on this image, the sky is terrible. Uh, so I'm going to replace uh, that with a darker background and move the bird slightly to the left for a better composition. So I'll open the file in Fendi Photo or Photoshop, and then I'll select the Flood Select tool or equivalent and set the tolerance to about 13%. You may need to play with that to see what gives you the best initial selection for your images. In this case, the background is pretty even, so the selection works quite well. And then just check the edges and select any additional areas that have been missed. If necessary, change the selection tool. For selecting edges with a lot of fine detail, you need to look at more advanced tutorials on YouTube for how to do this. So when you're happy with the Selection, uh, invert the pixel selection and create a mask. And the, the old sky should then be masked out. Now you want to go and find the background image that you want to use and open it in the Fendi photo and then copy and paste it into your edit and move it to the background. And basically there you are, you're done. Um, depending on whether the, there's a big difference in colors, you might need to blend the edges, which can be a, quite a painstaking task. So ideally you don't want to um, use a vastly different background color.
then if you need to move the subject for better composition, uh, you may need to do things a little differently. So deselect the background image and select the original image and the mask and copy and paste it back into the original image and then deselect the original image and mask and now select the merge the new image uh, that you've just pasted back in and click on the pointer tool and then move the image to where you want it. And if necessary, uh, resize the background image if it's different size from the original. And export the image. And that's it for this video on how I use DxO Photo Lab for my raw editing. Okay, here's the clip showing how um, Image Edge Editor handles recovering detail from this particular image. So I'm in the viewer here, selected the file, and I'll now go and open it up in the editor. And as we can see, it's quite blown out, so I'll go and try and make a few adjustments. But this, you know, nice bit of detail in the in the wings. So let's pull down the highlights as far as we can and see. We still have pretty blown out whites. But let's see how much detail we can pull back in the shadows. And yeah, not, not too bad. So we'll just try reducing the overall exposure, but yeah, it kind of blows out pretty badly when we pull that down. So I didn't have a lot of success, you know, getting much detail out of out of this particular image. Well, that's all folks. I hope you find that useful. Until next time.